Hello everybody, my name is Alex and today's video I'm going to be starting out a uh, little VR shooter template. Um, this will span over a couple different videos, uh, so we'll be starting out very simple in this one. Uh, I'll be showing you guys how to develop this template from start to finish. Um, so yeah, um, before we go and jump into that, um, if you enjoy the video or like the content, anything like that, uh, please subscribe, it helps out a ton. And with that, we'll go and jump right into the video. Alright, so here we are. Um, I've already gone ahead and actually created the project. Um, so uh, if, if you've played around with the VR template, you'll see that this is, for the most part, basically the same thing. Uh, there have been no plugins added or anything like that. I've simply started up a VR template project. The only thing that I have uh, added to the project is I did bring in this SKFP gun, uh, which you can find actually in the first person shooter template. Um, and that is the only thing that I've added into this project so far. Um, nothing else has been done to it. Uh, as I said, I'll be showing everything from start to finish, so uh, we'll be going through all this. So uh, first things first, um, I actually do want to create a uh, new map. Um, I'm gonna go and create a folder for real quick, uh, just because I don't really like this default one that they usually set you up with. Um, so we'll go ahead and do new level, and let's go ahead. Let's let's use the VR basic one, uh, and I'm actually gonna clear out some of this stuff as well, as I think it'll just make things look a little bit clunky. Um, so we'll go and just clear out everything and all that is done we'll, we'll leave uh, the, the rest of this here and we'll go and save this we'll save it as default map and save that into maps all right so here we go um, everything is all set up we are fully ready to go uh, so first things first let's go ahead we'll be using the default uh, player for this one so I'm not gonna worry about setting up a player or anything like that what I do want to start with is actually setting up the gun itself as there will be a little bit of setup to do the for this uh, we'll, we'll call it actors and blueprint class actor and we'll just call it gun uh, so for this first video, I'm only going to be showing uh, how to actually set up uh, grabbing the gun and uh, things like that. Um, I'm, I'm going to start out uh, only one grip point. I know um, in a lot of shooters and stuff, typically you'll have multiple. You might have one for, I'm not, I'm not really that familiar with gun terminology, but you'll have one for like uh, where the uh, grip uh, trigger area is you'll have one down the barrel for bigger you know like rifles and snipers and things like that um, and then you might also have one for the uh, uh, I, I, I can't I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is called I just can't remember off the top of my head um, but for uh, putting the loading the first bullet into place um, you know so on and so forth um, I'm not gonna worry about all that for now. I For now I'm only concerned about being able to pick it up with one hand in about the right place. So what we're gonna go and do is um, so we want to first import our skeletal mesh um, and we will call this gun and uh, the reason skeletal mesh in case you're curious uh, the SKFP gun is actually a skeletal uh, mesh so we're gonna go and grab that SKFP gun alright so now we have the skeletal mesh uh, attached correctly to our uh, gun actor you can see I've said it actually has the root up here um, I'm so for this video, I'm only going to uh, just let it attach as normal um, based off of the default root as the default uh, root location is actually already right here by the handle of the gun, uh, or I guess, I'm sorry, by the trigger. Um, in the future, uh, something that, uh, that will probably end up happening is using the... Uh, using sockets to uh, basically uh, grab the front of the gun, um, being able to load in a bullet, you know, things like that. Um, sockets will likely be the best way to go about doing that part. Um, 
there are of course other ways of potentially going around this you're not strictly limited to sockets uh potentially you could use scene components or just try and memorize the location which would be very tedious but i'm sure it would certainly would be possible um you know so on and so forth um so for but for now uh since we're only focused on trying to get the gun itself uh connected correctly to the hand um to a single hand, let me clarify that, um, then this is what we'll leave it as. Now there's one more thing that we need to add to the uh, gun actor itself, and that will be the, um, we'll need a collision component. Uh, now you can see we have a number of different options. Um, I'm going to go and go with the capsule as I think it would be a little bit better for this specifically. Um, uh, first thing we're going to want to do is actually rotate it correctly. Um, if I recall, it should be about there. Uh, I think we're going to want to scale it up just a tad there. I'm not concerned about making this perfect. I just want it roughly where it needs to be. Um, I think that should work. So let's, let's increase it just a little bit. And, oh, not that one raise it up a touch all right so that gives us our collision in uh, roughly the right spot that we want um, now of course the skeletal mesh itself does have collision as well and if we really want to we could try and get that to work um, however I think it's just easier just to have a second collision all to itself uh, you do also want to make sure it's at the very minimum set to overlap all um, as overlap will allow for us to still pass through it um, but still be able to detect th that it's there. Um, so yeah. Um, now that we have that, uh, if we go and jump over here to the motion controller pawn, um, I've already gone ahead and uh, looked at this here. Um, so we can actually go ahead and see that we're actually, when we actually press the uh, grip on the, um, on the con motion controller, uh, which will be labeled different things uh, in the input depending on what controller you're using. Uh, if you actually go and look, uh, I'm using an Oculus Touch, so it's simply called Grip. Uh, mixed Reality Headset will be called Trigger. Um, you know, uh, you, you have a couple different options here. Um, but, you know, it's already set up by default, so I'm just going to leave the grab left and grab right as it is. And we can actually see that what we're doing is we're grabbing the left and right uh, controller and we're calling grab and release actor on uh, e on the right and left controller you know as should happen um, so if we actually go and jump over into the BP motion controller um, I've actually gone, gone ahead and already cleared out the uh, original code um, some of it we will still be keeping as it was uh, but we're not going to be keeping everything the same uh, which is why I've already gone ahead and cleared uh, this part out um, so, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check if um, B wants to grip. Um, not get it. We're going to want to set it. My bad. Uh, we're going to want to set that to true. Uh, this will, if I recall, actually, I believe it's using the event graph, if I recall. Um, maybe not. Uh, but this is actually used for, oh, here we go. Uh, wants to grip. You can actually see that this is actually used for animations and things like that. Um, of course, you don't have to use the B wants to grip uh, or as it comes out wants to grip. Uh, it's completely optional. This is just saying that um, because we're at least trying to grip, the hand itself will close down, which is what we want. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab our grab sphere, which you can actually see is attached to the hand mesh over here. You can actually see roughly uh, where it is. Um, we're actually using the grab sphere to actually detect if the gun is around. Uh, so we're going to want to get overlapping actors. Uh, we don't want to do grab sphere because we already got that. Um, and then we're going to want to do for each. Okay. And then here we're going to want to do a couple things. First, we're going to want to check um, if the array element is valid. Uh, function, I believe? No, it's not function. Uh, there we go. Uh, so if we go and do is valid, um, we'll check to see if it is valid. 
uh, then if it is, we're going to want to grab the railment, um, and we're going to want to then check to see the get class is child of gun. Um, and the reason I'm doing uh, this whole process, get class is child of, uh, is because um, we could very well just get the class and compare it to this. However, if you want to create, you know, uh, additional guns off of this variant in the future, uh, then you can still use this and then simply um, uh, drive classes off of it uh, in the future and they'll all have a similar parent class, or I guess the same parent class, but uh, which will make them all uh, be recognized uh, as a child of gun. Um, and we're simply going to want to check to make sure of that. Uh, and also, of course, if you want to detect more things in the future, um, there are, of course, other ways around this as well. Um, but anyways, um, since we're only focused on the gun for now, uh, we're just going to check to see if it's a child of gun. Uh, and then if that is the case, we should have over here, we're going to want to set attached actor. And we're going to want to actually set it. Let's, let's do a couple reroute nodes. I want to keep it somewhat clean. Um, and we will go and slide that over here. Uh, and we'll grab this and we'll cast to gun. All right. Now from here, uh, we have... Um, we want to be able to attach this to the hand mesh itself. So if we go and grab this real quick, um, and then we're going to want to get a uh, gun. I have something in the way of my screen here. Uh, there we go. And then what we're going to want to do is attach component to component. Uh, we could also use, uh, we could also just grab the gun itself and attach uh, actor to component. Um, however, because the gun itself, if you actually look at, since it's the root component of this actor, um, it's going to attach the whole actor regardless. So I, I just prefer to do it this way. And then uh, location rule, rotation rule, scale rule, all this will stay the same. Uh, but we will want to change around uh, the final location rotation once it is finally attached. So if we actually go ahead, uh, we're going to want to reroute this a couple times real quick set relative location and rotation uh, and this will set it based off of where it is attached to the hand itself uh, which we want it to be attached uh, 0 0 0 0 0 0 um, and we can go and leave sweep and teleport alone uh, neither of those should really have any effect whatsoever all right so not that's taken care of next thing we want to go to is release actor uh, so what we're going to want to do is since we have it stored in the attached actor right here we can actually just go and grab it from the attached actor and uh, have this work first thing we're going to want to do of course is make sure it is valid if it's not then we don't want to release it at all we just want to you know let it be because that means there's nothing else attached um, so assuming it is, we'll go and reroute this a couple times here, try and keep it looking somewhat clean, and we will go ahead and do, um, not as valid, uh, detach from actor, and that will detach it from the hand mesh itself. Alright, so um, after just a little bit of testing. Uh, I did find that there were a couple things uh, that I did uh, that did need a little bit of adjustment uh, that, that I figured should just be done real quick since I've already kind of done this. So ro rotation uh, did need to be adjusted a little bit. Um, so I've set the Y and Z both to negative 90. This rotates it so that way it fits a little bit better. Um, looking at the uh, gun itself, the location will need to be adjusted a little bit of course. Um, you know, relative to the hand itself. Um, then if we actually go and look at the release actor, um, so I did forget about this. Uh, you did need to set wants to grip. Uh, this, of course, is for the animation. Um, so that way we can, uh, so that way it'll open back up once you release the gun. Um, 
Aside from that, we've also set the location, rotation, and scale world all to keep world. Uh, this will actually allow it to stay where it is that you released it. And then um, the attached actor, um, we did then set to null as, uh, as I believe this seemed to also relate to the animation. Um, I believe it does also check to see if the uh, animation if there to make sure there is no attached actor whatsoever so since there is so that did have to be set to null in order to uh, also uh, open up the hand um, and yeah so we can actually go ahead and uh, check this out real quick uh, of course this is still a bit rough um, and of course my headset disconnected once I can get this hooked up there we go um, so you can see the animation is still working and should actually be working on both hands as a matter of fact. And then we can actually go ahead and grab it. You can see the, uh, the hand itself um, is a little bit off. Uh, it probably needs to come back a little bit in order to actually fit right there. Um, but yeah, you can see, at least for the most part, it is all hooked up correctly uh, in terms of rotation uh, when you release it uh, it does still hover there in place so all the physics and everything will need to be set up correctly um, but that'll that'll be something I save for a future video and you can also see left hand works as well um, so yeah so that is the uh, at the release the grip part of the gun setup and um, of course there will need to be some tweaking done in the future all that kind of stuff all right, and with that, that is the uh, that is the start of this VR shooter template. Um, it, of course, some of the gun gripping and things like that will need to be tweaked in the future. Um, but yeah, so that is all that. Uh, if you're interested in this project, um, I will actually be leaving a repository in the description. Um, th so as I go along with this project, I will be. Uh, pushing it and uh, you'll be able to see it there probably even before even these videos come out um, but yeah so uh, if you enjoyed the video uh, be sure to subscribe it helps out the channel a ton and uh, with that that's the end of the video so see ya